And he told them, he said, you shall be betrayed both by what? By parents, your brothers, your kinfolks. I don't know why he included that one, that last one. It's, it's pretty, it's not uncommon at all to be betrayed by your friends. You can get some of your best betrayals by those that you thought you was closest to that were good friends to you. Over the years, I've shook my head in disbelief that friends could turn and, and do what they do. Here, out in Buena Vista, Brother Price was telling me that some of the kids out, in, out there in that area, probably out in that area, were vandalizing. Well, they were all friends. All these kids that were doing the vandalizing were all friends. They finally caught one or two of them. And guess what? They began to squeal on each other like little pigs. Friends. I'm not sure why Jesus included them because we know very well that friends oftentimes will turn each other in. But he said that they, they were going to be betrayed. Parents oftentimes do without to help their children. And yet, the situation that was fixing to develop between now and the time Jerusalem was destroyed was one of such shaking that even parents were going to be betraying their children. Brothers were going to be betraying brothers. Brothers were going to be betraying their parents. And can folks betraying one another? Why? Because they knew somebody that was living for God. You sure can. Somebody over there was from Oklahoma that if you say kin folks instead of relatives, you're from Oklahoma. Somebody there was from Oklahoma, there's kin folks. <laughs> Sister Moon, would you read for us? But there will not be a head of your hair perish. Don't worry. They can kill your body, but they can't kill your, take your soul. We oftentimes blame not living for God on a lot of things. But you know what? There is really nothing anybody can do to stop somebody from living for God. Absolutely nothing. When we read what the early church went through and we think something somebody's done to another person can stop them from living for God, uh-uh. Not if they really got the goods. Usually what happens is somebody's looking for an excuse not to live for God. They're looking for an excuse. Certainly there's a lot of us here today that if we, that would stop you from living for God, there's a lot of us that's had people turn against us, stab us in the back, that we thought were good Christians and we're still living for God. That's no excuse to not live for God. Jesus told the church, when you see the armies of Rome encircled about Jerusalem, He said, I want you to know that that is a good sign that something's about to happen. You know what? You would think that that would be a good sign that everybody could see. The armies encircled about Jerusalem. He said, know that it's desolate, the time of desolation thereof is very, very near. Let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and them which are in the midst of it depart out. And we find that in the first three and a half years of siege that the Roman armies come upon Jerusalem, that there was no way to, to get out of the Jerusalem. There was no way out. But for some reason or another, Josephus records that Titus, in the middle of that siege, three and a half years, pulled back his armies, 
And the old covenant Jews that were in Jerusalem began to rejoice because they had defeated the enemy. They thought, man, this is it. We've beat them. We've held out. And they give up three and a half years later. But the church wasn't rejoicing because Jesus had told them, whenever you see the Jerusalem compassed with armies, know that destruction is just around the corner. And when Titus pulled back his armies, the church found the opportunity that they had been looking for to obey what Jesus said. And they began to flee to the mountains. And Josephus records that then the Roman armies pulled back in for another three and a half years of siege. And that's when things got really bad. They got really bad. And if you'd like to read about it, I'd recommend to get the book of Josephus and skip all of the book and go right to the Jewish wars and read about the Jewish wars. The rest of it's not very much in it that's really all that interesting and I didn't think, unless you're really, really into history. But the Jewish wars, anybody should be able to enjoy reading them as long as you don't get sick easy. It's not pleasant. It's hard to believe people could treat other people the way that they were treated. Sister Nina, could you read for us? Now Jesus said that these be the days of vengeance. When Jerusalem is destroyed, these are going to be the days of vengeance. People are looking for a future days of vengeance in our future, but Jesus said that this was going to be the days of vengeance. That all things which are written, what? There's that little word again. That all things, all things. Like I made mention last Wednesday night, there are people, most everybody, will agree that Luke chapter 21 is about the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 A.D. But then they go to Matthew chapter 24 and they say, well, this is a future event. And if that be the case, Jesus was a liar because he said that all things which are written may be fulfilled. I guess some would propose that Jesus didn't know what he was talking about. Or maybe Luke, when he recorded the book of Luke, misunderstood Jesus. But I believe that the word of God is infallible. And when Jesus said that these be the days of vengeance, that them were the days of vengeance, that all things which were written may be fulfilled. Is there anything left unfulfilled? No, it's not, according to Jesus, because he said all things which are written may be fulfilled. I'm glad I didn't write this. Then he said, Woe unto them that are with child, and them that give suck in those days, for there shall be great distress upon the land. Mothers eating their children. Woe unto them. And wrath upon this people. As Jesus stood there as he was telling his disciple, and wrath upon this people. Put yourself back 2,000 years ago and understand how it was said. And wrath upon this people. Brother Aquilino, would you like to read Luke chapter 21, verses 24 and 25 in Spanish for us? Luke 21, 